Shine away the blocks to love. The, the first two Course in Miracles students on planet Earth, does anybody know their names? Bill and Helen were the first two Course in Miracles students. There wasn't a Course in Miracles book, they were just taking it down and Jesus, actually, they were just taking it down. They were like, this is cool, we're scribing, we're scribing. And Jesus actually had to say to him at one point, study the notes. <laughs> <laughs> See how even the resistance of the first two, they don't even have the book yet, and they're afraid to read it. <laughs> and Jesus has to tell them, study the notes. <laughs> See how even the resistance of the first two, they don't even have the book yet, and they're afraid to read it. <laughs> and Jesus has to tell them, study the notes. <laughs> well, he, Bill was a professor, Helen was a professor, and the interesting thing about Bill was, for people who knew Bill, like Carol Howe and, and Helen and Ken and so on and so forth, that Bill was a professor afraid of professing. Isn't that a, a conundrum? A professor afraid of professing. So he had something going on, you know, there was a block going on. That was part of his creative flow was to be teaching. I mean, he, he worked with Carl Rogers, he had some of the most wonderful people and teachers in his life, and he, had, he was brilliant, and he had all these things, but he was a professor afraid of professing. And Jesus worked with him. Some of you might have read Absence from Felicity. Some of this stuff is in there. Jesus worked with him on this, Professor Afraid of Professing. And Jesus would say, well, that's why you, you put yourself in an administrative function. You see, he got himself out of the classroom. He was so afraid of professing that he was like the head of the department, just in administrative functions, not really working with students or professing at all, because he was so afraid of professing. And Jesus said this thing to him, he said, well, the reason you're a professor afraid of professing is that you believe that to teach or to profess weakens you. That's the belief that's going on underneath. But an interesting block, you know, talk about way off the surface, is the belief that you believe it's weakening you. By teaching you are weakening yourself. And of course it was an egoic belief, because what Jesus is teaching us in the Course is ideas are strengthened as they are given away by sharing. They're actually strengthened. But the ego is the flip side of the Spirit, and it's saying, no, if you express, you will be weakened. It's a strange unconscious belief, but it's orbiting down there and it, it changed the way he lived his life. And he, he had to really come out of that because he, he, he started to really get into the Course and practice it and be guided to go to Course groups in the later part of his life and actually extend. He really had to extend the gift to keep it in awareness. So it can be the same with, with, with the book or with the music or whatever. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a process of, of clearing away these deeper beliefs in unworthiness and Helena went through that whole experience and it just takes as long as it takes because it's, it's got to be a thorough wash and you know that's the thing where the mind can grow impatient and think you know what is it what is it there is some specific block and it's really not a block in form it's it always has to do with a sense of, of unworthiness for example, we'll use Helen, who's the second, these are the first two Course in Miracles students. Helen, from a previous lifetime, had developed a, an enormous talent for, a skill for scribing, from scribing words from the Spirit and putting them down on paper. And Jesus told her that she had misused this scribal ability in a previous lifetime for the ego. She, that's what misuse means, you know, used it for the ego. And she had tremendous guilt over this misuse of this scribal ability. Therefore, when Jesus was going to use her in this lifetime, you know, from 1965 to 1972, she was so nervous and she was, had so much anxiety and so much guilt around it, and it was all coming from this past remembrance ancient remembrance of misusing the scribal ability in a previous lifetime. 
And, of course, Jesus was working with her to let go of time and space, to take her closer into the atonement, to see that, you know, the separation never happened, the misuse of the scribal ability never happened. You know, he was diving in with her to come to that awareness of pure innocence, which is a priori. It's prior to the senses, it's prior to time and space, it's the I am presence, that, that's what, who we are, truly innocent. So, that just shows you how, how deep it goes, it goes way into the mind, and it can get frustrating when you look for, like, a certain uh, block in form. Some people feel like, well, I've got a fear of whatever, public speaking, so I'll go to Toastmasters <laughs> and, and I'll get that corrected. And sometimes it does work, they're very willing for that shift of mind and they, it, it does work very well. But it's more of, a, of always a sense of unworthiness, that we're unworthy of the love, unworthy of the creativity to flow through us and as us, that's, that's where the, the block always is. So, to just be patient with it, and when the book comes out, you rejoice and go, Yay! Did it! <laughs> and when the songs, you know, you sing, and you sing, and you sing, you know, Helena sang in many choirs, and there was lots of singing, and expressing, and singing, and singing, and then it was just, you know, beautifully orchestrated with Bahani. It was a great collaborative effort, you know, with our friend Ken Kelly, collaborative efforts and just getting more and more comfortable and relaxed and feeling the, clearing away the unworthiness and then, you know, then it just pours through. <laughs>